head. And no, it's not your eyes, ears, nose, or mouth. It's your foramen magnum, a hole on the bottom of your skull. Today, we're going to figure out what this hole does and how scientists can use it to tell how an animal is moving. Our brain sits safely enclosed in our skull, right inside this bony cavity right here. But the issue is that it needs to connect to the rest of the body. It needs to connect to the spinal column, which runs down our back and through all the little nerves that go out to the tips of our fingers and toes. How does it do that? It can't just wirelessly connect to our spinal column. That's why we need this hole. This hole allows the brain stem to come down through it and connect to the spinal cord. Humans walk upright, and while doing so, we hold our spinal column vertically. This is called an orthograde posture. Right at the very tippy top of our spinal column is our skull. So our spinal cord enters our skull right in the middle on the bottom. Chimpanzees and many other creatures that walk on all fours have a pronograde posture. This means that they hold their spinal column horizontally rather than vertically. This has an impact on the placement of their foramen magnum, because instead of being right in the middle on the bottom like a human's, it's more posterior towards the back of the skull. You can see why this is. If a chimpanzee had a foramen magnum right in the middle on the bottom, on its horizontal spinal cord, it would be looking right at the ground. And so instead, it needs to have a more posteriorly placed foramen magnum so it can see in front of itself. Studies have looked at the placement of the frame and magnum in a wide variety of animals, including primates, rodents, and marsupials. And what they found is that there is a clear correlation between bipedalism and a more anteriorly, meaning more forwardly placed, frame and magnum. In 1924, this fossil ape skull was discovered at a quarry in South Africa. It was given to paleontologist Raymond Dart, who prepared and described it. And he realized that it was the skull of a juvenile ape, but not of any known ape species. He designated it to a new species, and one of the things that intrigued him about it was the placement of the foramen magnum. Although much of the base of this skull is not preserved, we have the very, very front of the foramen magnum, and it's very far forward, almost like that of a human. And so he believed that this might have been a bipedal ape. He received a lot of criticism at the time mainly because juvenile chimpanzees and gorillas also happen to have a very anteriorly forwardly placed foramen magnum. Dart's claims were later vindicated by the discovery of adult Australopithecus specimens, such as this one here, nicknamed Mrs. Plez. This adult skull shows that the foramen magnum is still fairly anteriorly placed. It's not quite as far forward as that of a human, but it's not as far back as that of a chimp either. Now, nearly all scientists agree that Australopithecines were in fact bipedal. And in addition to the evidence from that foramen magnum, we also have bones from the rest of the body, which also provide evidence for this claim. Barominological studies have found that these creatures are very different from humans, but also from chimps and gorillas. Instead, they probably belong in their own separate created kind that was made on day six of creation. How amazing! God made bipedal apes. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe.